Uddhav Thakre has challenged the election commission order freezing the Shiv Sena symbol and name for the upcoming bipoles in Mumbai. Last week, the poll panel had frozen the party's bow and arrow symbol as well as the use of its name ahead of the November 3rd Andheri East Assembly bipole in Mumbai. Now, this freeze is in place until there is a final order on the issue. Interestingly, the Shinde faction of the Sena is not contesting this bipole. It is the Uddhav faction versus the BJP. The Sena mouthpiece, Samna, today called the Election Commission's decision the sin of Delhi. Today, both the Uddhav and Shinde factions have also submitted new names and symbol options to the Election Commission with both sides battling out for the legacy of Bala Saab Thakre. Well, joining us exclusively now on NDTV tonight is Shiv Sena leader Aditya Thakre. Aditya Thakre, thanks very much for being with us. Uh, straight off, uh, very, very strong words I see used by uh, the Shiv Sena leadership about the Election Commission's decision, uh, calling it the sin of Delhi. Uh, are you questioning uh, the decision of the EC? Are you saying it was made at the behest of the BJP? Uh, the point really being that, you know, whatever is going on right now in Maharashtra, uh, the question really lies upon whether our processes are democratic anymore. Do we stick to the Constitution anymore? Because if you see for four months, for about four months today, uh, we have a government whose constitutionality has been challenged. Uh, we have a government that is highly unconstitutional. And if this is legitimized, you'll have many more such factions claiming larger parties made for national parties or regional parties going further in the country. I think that will lead to a huge level of instability in our country. Uh, and that is really the core question today, that whether a group of Gaddars can be legitimized in such a fashion. The question, though, here, uh, Aditya Thakre, what's, what many experts are saying is that the Election Commission has done the right thing simply because there is a dispute that is at the heart of this. And this is not just another factional war. Mr. Shinde is now the chief minister of Maharashtra. And therefore, the EC was right to freeze the symbol and the name for now until this gets sorted out. What would you say to that? Well, I think the first question really is, is he the real chief minister of Maharashtra? I think that is first to be answered. Two, uh, there's a question on the you know, uh, defection of all of these people and we've applied for disqualification. The, the hearing is going on. Uh, three, they're not even fighting this election. The real question again herein is more than anything else. The crux lies at these 40 people have sold their souls and they're wanting to finish us off and finish off the Shiv Sena. And that is really the intention that they're going ahead with. But in doing so, they're also trying to finish off our nation's democracy and the, you know, the people who are following the constitution of India. But at the moment, legally, Mr. Shinde is the chief minister of Maharashtra. Are you saying that you find the EC's decision unfair because they're not actually contesting this upcoming bipole? More than, I mean, again, you know, I would obviously go beyond just the EC because there is men, there's a lot that's going on behind what is going on in front of our eyes today. Uh, what is going on is the 40 Gaddars have applied for, you know, uh, the same name for a party that has been existing for more than 56 years now. Uh, for a party that has been founded on the principles of supporting Bhumiputras and largely if you see across the country, everybody knows that the party has given plenipotentiary powers to the president of the party. Now this legislative faction that broke away should have ideally resigned, hopped over and then contested elections. But what has happened is it's going on in terms of just as an illegal government and they're trying to challenge and take away everything. They're trying to steal the name, trying to steal the symbol. I think it takes a group of 40 to steal everything and that's famous in all our uh, stories from what we've heard since childhood well uh, aditya thakre the question though is you know uh, which is the real shiv sena both sides are now really having a, a, a maha battle for uh, bala saab thakre's legacy uh, they say they are no, there's the only, real there's sena. only one there's only one shiv sena yeah. uh, which is standing firmly behind uh, uddhav sir the other is a group of 40 gaddars who've sold their souls uh, in their quest and hunger for monstrous ambitions and that's what they're going on with and they are only puppets uh, nothing beyond that how are you convincing uh, your supporters and others about this on the ground though i know you've been campaigning a lot ever since the government uh, fell in maharashtra ever since your government fell but what exactly are you selling to them because the other side says look you guys diluted Hindutva by, by allying with the NCP and the Congress. You diluted your Hindutva agenda. Therefore, we are with the BJP. We stand for true Hindutva. To begin with, how do you answer that charge? I think we are not someone to sell or buy anything. The ones who've sold something are the ones who've crossed over and have sold their souls and the principles and the ethics. Uh, but really, if you see what happened on uh, the Sera rally day, of course, we had it at Shivaji Park, Chhatrapati Shivaji Park, which has been happening historically. 
But if you look at some of the visuals that the media has taken from various people who went to the other rally in BKC, uh, you had uh, people who don't even know what was happening at that ground in BKC uh, being taken to the ground for allegedly sums of different sums of money. Uh, some people were going there for the food. Some people said we're going for a mela. Some people were uh, basically non-political labor from different states put onto a bus and brought there. I also heard to an extent that the non permanent workers in Mantra were asked to visit the BKC grounds. And if you see the ground, you also have visuals coming from the media itself that when this illegal chief minister was speaking at, uh, the ground was half empty. You had the education minister uh, sitting on stage and passing out, dozing off uh, when the chief minister, the illegal chief minister was speaking. So I think everyone knows in Maharashtra what has happened. We live in an age of information. We live in an age of social media and media. And whatever was conspired and what, whatever happened, everybody has seen. Nobody has really liked the way that the 40 Gaddars have defected and, uh, you know, tried to finish up the Shiv Sena. Finally, in the last two and a half years, Mr. Uddha Thakre was a chief minister who was taking everyone together. Ours is a Hindutva that is inclusive. Um, yes, we as uh, the family, we as a party visited Ayodhya three or four times, even after becoming chief minister. We had a couple of MLAs from our allies, be it the Congress or the NCP, coming along with us. We also, uh, you know, funded a lot of temples in terms of uh, tourism, spirituality, uh, through tourism, through different funds that could be available through Maharashtra. So our Hindutva really is, of course, supporting Hindutva, but our Hindutva also ensured that everyone moved ahead in peace and prosperity and as a brotherhood. So I think that is very, very important for us. Can, These can you people explain how, across, but, 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 sorry, Aditya Thakre, how, how is uh, that messaging though going out to those who say that you've diluted the Hindutva cause? You're saying you're for Hindutva, I think the, but it's, the ones who are and that it's inclusive. It, it's kind of an oxymoron in a way in today's times. So, not really. I mean, not really, not at all. I mean, as a government, um, yes, we changed the names of Aurangabad and Usmanabad. Uh, Aurangabad, of course, from uh, the Mughal ruler who was, you know, really a despot to Sambhaji Nagar. We changed the uh, Usmanabad to Dharashiv, but without riots and all the people there, all the communities welcomed him. Uh, me personally, as Minister for Tourism and as a Guardian Minister for Mumbai, I went to Tirupati. We requested the Tirupati Temple Trust to come to Navi Mumbai, set up a temple there in 10 acres. And uh, having said that, it is this new government that has given it a stay. We uh, demanded a Ram Mandir in Ayodhya in 2018, and that's where you saw even the court proceedings moving forward. We celebrated the decision. Nowhere did any clash of ideology happen, even though we were with Congress and NCP, because we know how to work in a democratic fashion and take various ideologies together and work for the people. Yes, uh, probably when the governor of Maharashtra had written a letter to the chief minister of opening up temples and spiritual places and asked him whether he had you know, turned secular suddenly, that's the only time uh, the chief minister said, we will not open up any institution till the medical go-ahead is given by the doctors during COVID waves. We, our first religion, our first religious duty is to protect lives. And that's what we've done in COVID times without seeing any background, caste, creed, color of anyone in our state. I think that is the way we've gone ahead and everyone knows the work that we've uh, done in the state. Is there space though for this kind of so-called progressive Hindutva? As, as your it is, it is, it is largely accepted across Maharashtra. If you see uh, wherever I'm going and touring, people are coming out and showering the love and blessings. But I guess um, the 40 people who've gone there do not know what Hindutva is. They do not know what, uh, you know, Congress NCP or Mahavika Sagari, because for two and a half years, they enjoyed all the perks and benefits of being a part of the alliance. I think when there were some pressures on them, I don't know what, um, I don't know what people are saying out there or some monstrous uh, ambitions. That's when they hopped over. And um, they've become puppets now. How do you think Bala Saab Thakre would be looking at this uh, reinvented uh, Shiv Sena that you're projecting today and that your father has projected? Uh, because his politics was very strident and some would say much more hardcore in terms of its Hindutva approach. But the sort of more progressive line that you've taken, whether it's on environmental issues and other things which seem to have irked hardliners in your party. How do you think mm -hmm. he would have seen this? No, I think he was a very, very practical, honest person. Uh, he was relevant to every decade, every year that he was a part of, you know, uh, leadership and politics. And everything that we are doing today would have been acceptable because finally, as, uh, you know, uh, ideology, we're taking off with what my great grandfather, Prabodhan Karthakri, started. My grandfather, of course, my father and I are, you know, involving ourselves in the same service and same ideology. We're taking it ahead logically. Um, in terms of hardline, softline, we've always believed that, uh, you know, there are times where you have to take a hard line. There are times where you have to be, you know, relevant to your times. And when you make a statue, of course, while making a statue, you need a hammer and chisel. 
once the statue is made if you use a hammer and chisel again it's only foolish of you for you the next job for the next person is to take care of that statue uh, to take care of it idol and uh, do puja of it not use hammer and chisel all the time so what about the future of your shiv sena within the mva the mva alliance itself what is 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 it solidly together are you solidly together with the ncp and the congress as the of today if you've seen uh, the congress and the ncp have stood by us in testing times in tough times um, most importantly you know we were always warned by uh, people not not everyone but some people who you know claim to be political experts that we would face a danger from these allies in fact it's sort of amusing uh, that the two allies have stuck on despite our political and different ideological bases and we've worked for maharashtra whereas 40 people uh, for their monstrous ambitions our own people who we trusted and who we gave everything to have uh, betrayed us what have the last few months been like for you and and your father udhav thakre the former chief minister aditya uh, the last time you and i spoke was actually in the midst of that crisis when the government yeah. uh, fell uh what what have the last couple of months been like i think back then also i told you that the only way forward is onward and upward and that's what we've been focusing on we've been only going out to the people uh meeting the people what we realize is apart from the 40 gaddars um on ground the base is intact everyone's intact everyone has seen what went through um they could have gone in a democratic fashion they could have gone in a better fashion but the way that the lying in broad daylight i think is really embarrassing for us as a state that we're looking at such politics today um the yuva sena the mahila agadi the shiv sena everything is in its place and more so even the non political person today is uh, really not like liking what's going on in our state but what have you been doing in the last few months you've been seeing us we've been only meeting the people uh, yes two and a half years we were working for the people through government now outside government we've been raising pertinent issues Uh, issues such as the Vedanta Foxconn deal that was let away by our own government here, as in the Gaddar government, not our own government, but the illegal government. You've had a bulk drug park that's gone away. You've got a couple of investments that have gone away. Uh, largely, we're looking at governance and politics being mixed up and messed up today. So we've been only countering that and trying to reach out to the people and only prove to be an alternative. Uh, another thing is, if really this forty, the group of forty. had enough strength on ground and enough confidence in themselves they would have resigned and face elections as of today how do you answer those who say that this is the end of the road for the thakre family not the shiv sena uh, and not bala saab's legacy but for uddhav thakre aditya thakre and that in a sense uh, the bjp is out to finish that that thakre shiv sena uh, how how do you respond to them and the fact that eknath shinde at the moment does seem to have the numbers on his side he does that's why he's the chief minister i i have only one response to that you know back then too i said i said the same thing and today i can tell you i told you so because they're only after a family and a chief minister and a leader a former chief minister and a leader who took everyone together and was a progressive voice in india and today anyone who's an inclusive and a progressive voice is trying to be stamped out and i think that is what we are facing today the larger danger is not just to the thakre family the larger danger is just not to a 32 year old like me who's trying to voice the youth uh, the larger danger is not to only the shiv sena party it it lies and it it's surrounding our democracy and our country's constitutional ideals all right so you're saying it's a much bigger fight clearly that's a fight uh, that uh, you uh, and udhav thakre are taking uh, right to the finish aditya thakre thanks very much for joining us on ndtv today thank you thank you